Everybody and welcome to Stellos Stadium in Nashua, New Hampshire. John Collins along with Tom King and welcome to October. It's October 1st. It's the meaty part of the football season and tonight South meets BG in another intra-city battle on a very familiar turf for both of these two teams. It is John Collins. It's also the cold part of the football season as we stop for the national anthem. We're ready for some football here at Stellos. Yeah, and this is pretty important football, too. It Maybe it's week five of a nine-game regular season, so now the games, the stakes get higher. But also in the West Conference, if you're looking for a conference champion, this game is going to go a little bit of a ways to determine it. South is one and three coming in. They desperately want to stay in the hunt. To do that, they're going to need to win tonight. Bishop Girton, three and one. They could go to four and one and be in the driver's seat or close to it with a win tonight. So there's a lot at stake. John Trishiani talking to him after the Merrimack game, he said, we knew the games with Merrimack, no South and North, those three weeks would probably determine our fate in the West Conference. And that's pretty much the way it's gonna run. Bishop Girton doesn't have to leave the friendly confines of Stellos for five straight games. They had Merrimack, they they have uh, South tonight. They've got a couple home and games. North next Friday night, yep. which could be for first place in the conference, depending on what happens sure. tonight, or yep. it could be for survival for both teams. So, And then they have Alvern here, I believe, the follow, you know, one of those weeks. That they've got everybody here. So this is, this is, this is when they should be, be winning their games or trying to win their games. We saw, but I'll tell you what, though, Josh Campo, we saw an example for Nashville, for the Nashville South Senior. I did a story on him at nationaltelegraph.com today. He is just the real deal when he's healthy, when, he, when his legs are, are okay and he's not cramped up. They think they found that a way to solve that. And sure enough, he did last Friday night with that epic win over North. The key for South is they've got to kind of put that game in the rearview mirror and get moving straight ahead. John Collins, I'll be down on the field. Matt said to Suazo, of course, Charlie Bellavance. Those are the two keys for Girton. South's got a little more depth offensively. Let's see if they use it tonight. Should be a great game. Great setup of the game there by Tom King. Pete Johnson, our executive producer, right next to me. Our cameraman today is Tim O'Neill. The public address announcer is Jason Roby here at Stellos. This should be a good one. It'll be tough to top last Friday night, a 43-42 come from behind win for South to keep their postseason hopes alive. They were in grave danger going down 0-4 on the season, trailing, I believe it was 27-13 at the half, and they came all the way back to win with no time left on the clock in the fourth quarter. They got eight points. They got a touchdown and a two-point conversion with no time left to secure the victory. And credit to Scott Knight for going for it rather than kick the extra point and send it to overtime. He went for the two-point conversion. Do or die, win or lose right there on that play. And Connor Rousell was able to run it in 
Uh, a little bobble at the end, but it was called a good touchdown. So South up against it, though, with this Bishop Girton team, as Tom just mentioned, 3-1 and one entering tonight. And the only loss was against the iron of the New Hampshire Division I boys football against Londonderry. A two-score loss in that one, but they played the Lancers tough. So clearly BG the favorite as South gets set to kick off to the Cardinals going from right to left. Of course, Nashua South in their home purple jerseys and BG gets the uh, ball only after about a 10 or 12 yard onside kick basically. Recovered Will Moynihan falls on it and this is going to be great field position for the Cardinals. Very rarely now do we see kickers boot it to the opponent's end zone on kickoffs. There's a lot of that. Squib kicks, onside kicks, short kicks, looking for that turnover perhaps. But it does consistently yield first and 10 around the 35, 40, 45 yard lines for these offenses. And here we go. As Tom just mentioned, it is the... Matt Santos Suazo and Charlie Bellavance show the one-two punch with the ground game. The quarterback and the Charlie Bellavance gets the handoff, crashes through the line. He's got a short gain on first down. Clearly, after watching the video, South knows exactly who's going to get the primary carries here. It's Charlie Bellavance and followed by his quarterback, Matt Santos Suazo. Even though Merrimack knew one of those two players was going to get the ball. Last week in the game, BG still racked up the points drive after drive to take that one, a slugfest against the Tomahawks. BG at a record of 3-1 and one, trying to drive down with the opening possession of the game. 12-minute quarters in New Hampshire High School football. Bellavance picks his way to the line. Big opening. He finds it, and he... Rumbles for a first down. At least 10 and a little more for Bellavance on the carry. Bellavance not really hit until he got into the secondary right there. He's a big back is Charlie Bellavance. A couple of rosters here. This one has heights and weights on it. And number 26 listed at 6'1 and 220. And he certainly looks every bit of that. Santa Suazo hands it off to Bellavance again. He stiffs arms the tackler, breaks three tackles. He's still on his feet to the 20, the 10. Nobody's going to stop Charlie Bellavance. A 44-yard touchdown run in the opening two minutes. And BG is already on the board, up six to nothing. No flags. The speed, the power, and the inability of the South Tacklers to bring Bellavance down. It could be a long night here at Stellos. Formidable line for BG also, opening up huge gaps for Charlie Bellavance. And once he gets ahead of steam into the secondary, it's look out. And you can, you can check it out for yourself, folks. The, uh, the size advantage of this offensive line and the strength to be able to move bodies up front. Unfortunately for South, that does not bode well on the opening possession. So less than 90 seconds into this one, it is a 7 to nothing Bishop Girton lead. South, of course have a chance. They have a potent offense that has an opportunity to maybe slug it out. But clearly a tough hill to climb here if they're going to give the ball back to Bishop Girton with a punt here and there. BG will look very difficult to stop. So handling the punting, Connor Lennon for the Cardinals. Tees it up at the 40. Let's see if he elects to boot one deep or will we see another squib kick here? Opportunity for our first touch of the game for Joshua Campo. He is back there with 
Lorenzo Abreu, but instead they elect to go with the squib kick, the pooch kick up front. And uh, they allow South to set up shop at the 37, first and 10. So Josh Campo into the backfield with Michael Rutstein at quarterback, also a threat offensively, Connor Rousell, who wears number eight in purple. The handoff, Campo started to his left, goes to his right, and a nice chunk on first down beyond the 40. a four-yard gain, call it second and six. Rutstein will throw the football on occasion. He has a few receivers near side, left, and of course the ever-dangerous Campo standing right behind him gets another handoff, breaks it to the outside, to the left, Campo one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback, dragged down, great tackle made by Luke Korkolakos on the wing. It was Korkolakos versus Campo one-on-one. -on -one. He beat the block and got him down, and we have a... What's that? Looks like a block in the back against the Panthers, so... This will probably be accepted. And we'll see where the officials mark the ball. 9.49 remains in the first quarter. Temperature expected to drop down into the low 50s tonight, but still pretty much ideal playing conditions for these two teams here on the first Friday in October of 2021. So it'll second down and about 16 from their own 32. Make it uh, maybe 15. Into the shotgun once again is Michael Rutstein. The man in motion getting the handoff is Lorenzo Abreu. Abreu driven back after a decent gain. Had to get 15, got about six. So third down and long here for the Panthers. We might see the game's first passing play with 9.09 remaining in the first quarter, and South trailing by seven, a quick seven on a 44-yard touchdown run by Bellavan. South doesn't want to give the ball back right away, but they need nine yards. Could bring up a punting situation if they don't get significant yardage here on this third down play. One step drop, quick hitter to the right, in the slot complete, fighting for first down yardage and close to it was Lorenzo Abreu. And I believe he got that first down, Lorenzo Abreu, with great awareness of where he was on the field. When he received that ball, he was a step or two shy of the yards needed to be gained, and he got it. Wrestling with the defensive back, first and 10 for the Panthers. A great conversion there. Nice cutback by Campo, and he is got eight yards on a first down carry Josh Campo so South survives the block in the back penalty gets the first down and is on the move now in BG territory trying to tr tie this game up here in the early part of the first quarter Rutstein calling signals Four-step drop, he's flushed out of the pocket. He's going to fake the throw and put it under his arm, and he's got the first down as he's driven out of bounds by Bellavance, but a nice gainer on the quarterback scramble by Rutstein, and he has another south first down. Ball spotted at the 36-yard line, first and 10 for the Panthers. South's offense showing that they are able to play with this BG defense. 
Handoff. Fake the compo. Keeper to Rutstein. Good misdirection as he crosses over right tackle. And he got oh, about four yards on the play. Call it second and six. Ball at the 32. Good fake that time by the Panthers. I do not. There's always one. No 77 yet. Big boy. Running right at that the end, and they go around the end, and it's got a first down for Lorenzo Abreu. He's driven out of bounds, but not before. About a nine-yard gain. First and ten for South. Threatening to score in their first possession as well. We are five minutes into the opening quarter, just about 7.05 remaining. And it's been taken up by a quick drive by BG and a deliberate, purposeful march here by South in which they overcame a penalty, converted on a long third down and nine, and are on the move deep in BG territory. Rutstein calling signals. In motion is Rousel. Handoff to Compo up the middle. He's in the waiting arms of defensive lineman. I believe that was Matt Ha in the middle, 56. And also Rocco Giracci was in on the tackle. It usually takes two or more to bring Compo down and certainly BG. Some guys who are every bit as big as Joshua on that defensive line. Pretty formidable when you take a quick glance. So second down and long here for South. Quick hitter to the outside. It's complete and he cuts inside to the five into the end zone. Connor Rossell on a 20 yard touchdown pass reception where the defensive back tried to jump the route and go for the interception and when that ball skirted his fingertips Rousel with the sure-handed grab and the jaunt into the end zone. Flag on the play. <coughs> Who's it against? Oh, it is against the team that scored the touchdown. That will not count. That one hurts South in a big way. Another block in the back. Instead of six points on the board, they are going to be faced with second and long. Second and about 16. So they go back from the 20 spot foul to the 27. Exciting play there for South. Rolling to his left, looking to pass on the move. Rutstein completes to Rousel. He gets another block, plows over a tackler at the stick. And on the tackle for BG. We don't have a nine again. Yeah. It was number nine. We got to get some corrections on a. I guess BG got a new set of uniforms and it's kind of wreaked some havoc. Oh, that was Luke Corcolacos on the tackle, yes. Right. Yeah, oh yeah, that's a clarity of the numerals is big points. Handoff, no, keeper, Rutstein, inside the 10, inside the five, dives forward. He's down at about the one. Tackle made by Chase Amaral in the corner. Rutstein, a yard away from a first down, or half a yard from the first down marker, a yard from the end zone. Oh, could be a first down and goal. They're actually going to measure. It's right in front of the stick, so it's actually going to be what? Inches short? Yeah. As Jason Roby described it about a credit card to go, it is that close, it appeared, that uh, the lead ref just put his fingertips an inch apart. So that would give 
any kind of progress here would give South four fresh downs. But how about overcoming penalties on this drive? One that, two blocks in the back, one that took a score off of the books. It was a 20-yard touchdown pass that was erased, and they in turn erased it immediately by going right back to Rousel, and then the keeper for Rutstein an inch away from another South first down, a yard away from a touchdown. Compo, the eye back. Rutstein in the shotgun. He's going to give it to Compo, and he waltzes into the end zone. Six points for South. So all of South's offensive weapons on display in the opening drive. Rutstein, Compo, Rousel, Abreu. Brilliant drive to overcome a couple of penalties, and now the extra point to try to tie this up and stay step for step with Girton. Great disparity between the effectiveness of South's offense and defense to this point in the game and the season. The kick is up, and it is good. We are tied at 7. 5.07 remaining in the first quarter, just about seven minutes in. And we're tied. One possession for each team, one touchdown for each team. The BG drive taking a lot more off the clock. Uh, excuse me, South drive taking more off the clock. BG's drive took less than 90 seconds. So time for another kickoff. South and BG and North as well uh, favoring these squib kicks and onside kicks rather than boot booting it deep. And if you're going to do that, if you're going to give up the good field position, you might as well go for a turnover while you're at it. So that would be a uh, one way for South to keep the ball out of the hands of this potent BG offense is to try to maybe recover one of these, one of these times. Santo Suazo back to receive. And as the assistant coach pronounced it, Adam Yano on the back line. There's the end over end, and it's going to bounce inbounds. You know, just going to go to a knee, and it's first and 10 at the 25. So has the same effect as a, an NFL touchback right there. First and 10 for the Cardinals with 75 yards to go to retake the lead, barring a field goal. They are all about the touchdowns, though, this BG team. This potent attack featuring Bellavance and Santa Suazo. Handoff, Bellavance, stiff arm, a round right tackle, has about seven yards on the first down carry. Drag down. Antonio Martinez on the tackle. Sophomore, good looking sophomore player, number 80. 2023, actually he's a He's a junior, getting way up there in those numbers now. Good hit at the line, and this is going to be a rare short gain for the Cardinals. No gain, maybe a loss of one on the play for Bellavance. Good stick by the middle of the South defensive line. So it's third down and a long three for the Cardinals. They have not yet thrown the football. They have not yet had to. Second possession of the game. We're tied at sevens. Audibleizing here as BG looks to their sideline and the coach Trisiani to maybe change the play at the line of scrimmage. The handoff is a keeper and hit at the line and dropped short of the first down. The question now is, will BG punt 
on fourth and short in their own end. Two successive excellent stops up front by the South defensive line. Matthew Harding is up there, number 56, among other Purple Panthers who rudely greeted Santa Suasso on the keeper. They were not fooled by the fake to Belavance. And in fact, BG is going to go for it here on fourth and a long two. And they're going to kick it, a quick kick. Back to grab it is number 18 for South. And he has a nifty return to give great field position. Rutstein, the quarterback, catching that like a center fielder all by himself there, was wise to the quick kick and did not let it bounce. And South is set up at the 47-yard line. So just when you thought that maybe South did not have what it takes to come up with a stop of Bellavance and or Santos Suasso, they stop him on two successive plays, and BG does in fact elect to punt. So a defensive stop, now on their second possession, let's see what the Panthers can do. The fake handoff, the keeper, up the middle goes Rutstein, and he is across midfield. That is a gain of five, four and a half. Call it second and a short six. So into BG territory again. South mixing the run with the pass. Effective to this point here in the first quarter with a chance to take their first lead on the three and one Bishop Girton Cardinals. South trying to go on a two game winning streak after their dramatic comeback against North last Friday. One step drop, fires, oh it's knocked loose. The hit by Korkolakos. Pass intended for Karsten Lemire. actually hit him in the chest it appeared. Or the midsection, a good quick strike pass from Rutstein but the hit was too much, it jarred the ball loose, and it is incomplete. So third down and six from the 50. South able to convert a couple of key third downs in their last possession. Can they do it again here? Rutstein's going to fake to Compo, run to the right, and he is dragged down well short of the first down. So good defensive play by the Cardinals. They are expecting a punt here from Rutstein. And in fact, the South quarterback is back in a punting formation on fourth and long. No pressure on the punter. Rutstein lets it fly. It's going to get out of bounds at around the 20, we'll see where they mark it. So two touchdowns, two impressive drives, one a very quick one for BG, and a methodical drive by South yield two scores in their opening possessions, but then the defense is heard from for both teams. A defensive stop for South, defensive stop for BG, and we're still er even at seven. And now it's BG's third possession of the opening quarter. 121 left to go in period number one. Matt Santa Suasso calling signals. He's got Baker in motion right to left. He's going to hand it to Bellavance. Plows through the middle of the line and then he's driven back. Good hit up front. Charlie Bellavance was met by Matthew Harding, who's been getting a body on Bellavance and Santa Suasso pretty consistently in the middle of that south defensive line. A very valuable member of the D-line is Matt Harding. So it's about three plays in a row, three running plays in a row. They haven't gained that much ground for the Cardinals. They are going to give it, and there is another strong hit at the line of scrimmage. The Panthers not being fooled by these 
Pseudo handoffs to Bellavance. Santa Suasso greeted at the line once again. Colby Vancelet and Matthew Harding in on the stop. No opening there for the BG quarterback to run through. So it is third and a considerable six yards here for the Cardinals. who are in danger of going three and out again. They seem to be simply refusing to throw the football, thinking that they can break one off at any time. And we do have, what's this? A timeout called by the Cardinals to talk this over. No time on the clock? End of the quarter. They just uh, let the quarter tick down, I suppose. It looked like a... a Looked like a standard indication of a timeout charged to BG, and yet the, the quarter expired. The play clock and the scoreboard clock are both kept on the field. They have an idea of delay a game if, there's, if it's going to happen, if there's a discrepancy between the play clock and the uh, game clock, the officials would know, so maybe BG did need to call the timeout to avoid a delay a game penalty on third and six. But then that means they'll have to put at least a couple of ticks back on the clock. Yeah, normally... They would take the ball and move it to the opposite side of the 50 if the quarter, in fact, had ended. Two seconds will be put back on the clock, so we still are officially in the first quarter. The last play of the first quarter will be third and long for the Cardinals. In a 7-7 game, big play here for BG. Trying to convert. Will they throw it? Two-step drop, flushed out of the pocket, and he's going to be dropped. He's going to be dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Fourth down, upcoming. The South defense, tremendous in their last two series. So we have, in fact, gone to the end of the first quarter. It'll be fourth down and five, and we will shift sides of the field here, or ends of the field. Ball spotted at the 29-yard line of, of BG. 7-7. Seven, seven. The ease with which BG scored in their opening possession, the way that Bellavance just seemingly ran through everybody on the South defense, had you wondering if it was going to be, or me saying it out loud, it's going to be a long night for South and the South defense, but not so in the last two series, mainly because of the play of the defensive lineman led by Matthew Harding up front for the Panthers. They have other ideas about letting Bishop Girton run wild all over the Stellos turf. So we'll see what happens here in the second quarter, but it looks like South is about to get their third possession of the game as they go toe-to-toe -to -toe here with the leading team in New Hampshire Division I West. Cardinals, record of 3-1. and one. Only lost to Londonderry. Baker with the punt. Down the middle. Fair catch call for. And dropped. And it's loose. And diving. What a play. Oh, it's still loose. Who's got it? Two BG players trailed. And it is a Girton ball. Recovering in the pile was Chmielecki. Chmielecki came away with it. Abreu was first to the ball, but he could not control it. And unfortunately for South, the worst case scenario, they are not able to field a standard punt. Got a lot of height on it, but it went off the fingertips of Karsten Lemire. And Labreu was Speedy first to the ball, but in the dive, ball kind of 
jumped to the side on him, and two trailing BG players, including Chmielecki, pounced on it. Straight drop, throw down the middle, wide open, it's complete at the 10-5, touchdown! A 36-yard touchdown strike from Matt Santoswaso to Cody Szymanski. The sophomore wide receiver on a slant post pattern got about two steps on the defender and the element of surprise for BG who had run the ball and run the ball so much before that play, especially on first down, and they caught the South secondary napping on that one. 13-7 with the extra point to come for Connor Lennon with the hold and the kick, and it is good. 14-7. So an unfortunate chain of events there for South. The fumbled punt reception and then a quick strike pass for 36 yards, Santa Suasso to Szymanski, and BG's got their lead back again by seven, 14 to seven here, early second period. Cameraman for tonight's game once again is our Tim O'Neill atop the press box here at Stello Stadium. Our eyes on the field. Cover that epic game last week. Wow, 43-42. It looked like an impossible come back to hope for at halftime for South, but they managed to do it. Can they do the same here? Coming from behind once again, trailing 14 to 7 in the first half this time. So the game's first turnover proved costly. Connor Lennon will boot it from the 40. See what type of kick he goes with here. Kicks it short end over end. That was a fairly easy catch for the up man. Jake O'Connor on the reception at about the 29. So it's first and 10. Michael Rutstein and the South offense back out there on the far hash mark. Roussel is the slot receiver near side, number eight. He gets a lot of touches in this offensive scheme. And of course, the big back is Josh Campo to the right of Rutstein. In motion, Abreu. Picking his way through the line is Campo with a very short gain. Several BG players in on the tackle, including Jacob Baker making his presence known down there. Cotter Accomando, number 11, also in on the tackle up front. Accomando doesn't look like the biggest guy. Uh, but right in the mix of it there. Rolling to his right, Rutstein looking to pass. Throws on the run. It is complete. Coming back to the football is Rousel. Short of the first down, but nice communication between quarterback and receiver in traffic near side. And it makes it a more manageable third down and five. Panthers. Mixing in a rollout pass there for Rutstein. Now it's on the near hash mark. Let's see if he rolls the other way or will they go with the handoff to Compo. He's going to follow the block of Compo and he's going to be hit in the backfield and dropped. Just not fooled at all, blowing that play up. Several BG defenders, including number 68. Rocco Giracci leading the charge for the Cardinals. So a punting situation quickly here for South. Hoping for better than that. They, I'm sure they were because they had had a chance to go down and take the lead at 7-7, receiving a punt that was fumbled. And now they go three and out. That's a great bounce for the Panthers. 
having to get away from it was Santo Suazo as it just became too tough to manage once the bounces got going and turns into a something like a 60-yard punt for the Panthers. Rolled all the way to the 11, first and 10 for the Cardinals. So BG's got a turnover. South would love to get one of their own, get one back. 9.51 to go in the half. Matt Santa Suasso calling signals as he stands on about the five. Hands it off to Bellavance up the middle. Falls forward for a good chunk on first down. Gets to the 15, gain of about four. 36-yard touchdown pass from Matt Santoswaso to Szymanski. The difference in the game right now. And the handoff to Bellavance following a block. He is clipped at, at the uh, end of the line and in on the tackle was number 54 for South. What was it, 53, Mark? Yeah, 50, 54 for South. Just a great play. Brady Swisher, the senior defensive end, bringing Bellavance down for very short yardage. It's going to be third down and four. Big play here. South has BG just about pinned in their own end and would love to make them go three and out and punt from close to their own goal line, but it depends on this play. Quick strike to the right, it is complete. Slipping a tackle, first down and more past the 30. Great reception and run after the catch by Adam Yano. The key part of that play was making the first tackler miss, and then Yano you know, able to gallop his way past the first down marker far side. So first and 10 for the Cardinals. They convert on third and four to maintain possession of the ball. Leading 14 to seven. Chance to go up by two scores. Getting the signal or the play call from the sideline. Santa Suasso is gonna keep it, faked it to Bellavance. He is dragged down at about the 35-yard line. They're going to mark him at the 34. Tackle made by Osuki, number 44 for South. Osabuyan Osuki. Santa Suasso in that five-yard shotgun. Keeps it, another fake to Bellavance. Running left around the end. He's got good yardage, a first down before he's forced out of bounds. Antonio Martinez credited with the tackle, but not before Santa Suasso got a first down easily and moves the chains first and 10 at their own 49 for the Cardinals. <laughs> That's one way to look at it, 51 yards out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he used to say that, huh? Bob would say 51. Well, think of it, you know, it's, it would certainly be easier to keep track of the yards if they suddenly superimposed 175, 60, 51. That is a six-yard gain on first down for the Cardinals. Moving the ball methodically on the ground, and they've mixed in a pass or two of their own, including that touchdown pass. So South can't completely sell out to the run, especially here on second and four. This time, Bellavance does get it. Slips a defensive lineman and falls forward to a yard short of the first down. It'll be third down and one. 
Six and a half minutes to play now as BG had a 90-second touchdown drive to open the game, but right here they'd be content to chew up most of the remaining time and stick another one in for a two-score lead. Of course, South's defense has other ideas. Not even a bobble. All these touches, all these runs that you see Santa Suasso and Bellavance do, not even a hint of a fumble. He's hit in the pack and pulled down, ripped down. Number 53 for South on the tackle, Colby Vancelet, textbook. And unfortunately, uh, South players a little bit slow to get up. You do not want to lose uh, Matthew Harding. He looks like he's going to stay in. Number 56, basically the nose tackle for South. And guess what? They stopped him on third and one. It's going to be fourth and maybe a foot, foot and a half for the Cardinals. Stranger things have happened if somebody from South can get in and blow up the play. The ball would turn over on downs. BG's offense, also the line, so big and powerful, and they're very disciplined. You don't see anybody jumping offside. And do you now, though? What happened? Was that a delay of game? Fourth and inches. Santa Suasso pleading with the officials, why didn't you let me run that play? What was wrong with it? And we'll, they're about to find out. Delay a game against BG. Wow, they did not get it off before the play cl clock expired. The yep. <laughs> so they mark it off, and that is a, of course, needless to say, big call because a fourth and inches becomes fourth and about six. Better chance for South to come up with a huge stop and get the ball effectively as a turnover on downs with 5.20 to go, trailing by a touchdown. Now we have a timeout, possibly by South, to talk strategy here. Opportunity knocks. Bishop Girton wants a timeout. So following the delay of game, still not certain about what they want to run here. Huddling up both teams, as you can tell. Scott Knight right out there, South's head coach of many, many years. Explaining what they need to do in this situation. All at the 47-yard line, fourth and six. Well, that was a mistake by Santa Suazo on the delay of game. He's got to look at the ref who will raise his hand when there's five seconds left. And the ref was counting it down. There's no way he was going to get the snap off in time. He's got to call timeout there. Instead, they waste the timeout here, where really he's going to punt it. He should quick kick it. Not quick kick it, but just punt it. Yeah, it'd be kind of um, stubborn to go for it here, you would yeah, think. Yeah, I, I, but it doesn't look like they're going to. He's rolling to his right, looking to pass. He's got a wide open man. He throws it. It is complete. Wow. Number 12 for Girton is Chase Amaral. I'm shocked that they went for it, but they also, if he had thrown it right away, he had Gano wide open down that left flat. Wow. Went, from the, went for the higher percentage throw, but... Surely effective. In That's a big the, first down. Yeah, I mean, they knew they had that play in their right. pocket, Tom. They hadn't really tried that before. To this one, which converts. There's on a lot of things six. I think they can probably do with this offense. They're going to roll and run to the left, and Santa Santa Suasso is down at close to the 25 yard line. Needs about to get the 27. So you got okay. seven on that play. Second and three. Clock continues to run. This drive eating up the minutes that are remaining here in the first half. I was dying for a change of possession so I could get up here, you know, or stoppage. That timeout saved me, but yep. you don't want to miss any plays. But, I mean, Girton, you know, you get two feature backs that I think ought to be really big in the second half. Bellavance kid, has the yeah. first down as yeah. he stumbles forward you know, close to the 20. 26 and 7, you know. 
should be duking it out in this game. And I think, I think both coaches are kind of trying to preserve their guys for the second half. Yeah, limiting their touches, yeah, especially I, well, I think uh, with, with compared Comp to last yeah, week. Yeah, I think with Campo, it worked last week. So, got him. He was much stronger, you know, later, later on. South in danger of going down by two scores at half at the moment. Under four minutes to go. Santos Suazo hands it off to Belavance. He's hit by Matt Harding just about in the backfield and brought down. Harding playing a great game in the middle. Yeah, they're, the they're stopping the middle right now, doing a good job. South's doing a great job of that. They just had a lot of missed tackles on that first Belavance touchdown run. They did, and it looked for a moment like it was going to be a long <laughs> night, and then South came up with two defensive stops in a row. Right, because Girton, I think, you know, they, they finally saw Belavance a little bit, and then so Girton said, okay, we got to do something else. Yeah. Keeping it. Santa Suasso wow. rolls out. He's got Baker he as a lead block, it. and he's going to follow that for a gain of close to first down yardage. Yep. It depends on the spot. I'll tell you what. If there were sticks on that side of the field, he would have gone right for them. But they're on the opposite side, so it's tough to tell. And it'll be third and short. Now they mark him out at the 13. I was mentioning, Tom, with all these running touches for Belavance and Santa Suasso, not a bobble, never a fumble to this point in our coverage of them this uh, season. Yeah. You'll, you'll see one on this play, probably. <laughs> <laughs> the handoff, fake to Belavance, keeping it Santa Suasso up the middle. Yeah, and, they, and saving it Inside the five. Someone got his, the back of his shirt. I can't tell who it was. And saved a potential touchdown. Santa Suazo with a nice run and gets it down to See, about the If he stuck with the super, super tight 13, he might have slipped that tackle. Exactly, you know. <laughs> we were hearing it. that uh, his yeah. usual number came in in the new uniforms and it was just too small. Yep. So he had to change to eight tonight. The handoff, Belavance is through. Boy. Barely touched. Six more points for the Cardinals. They're up 20 to seven with the extra point to come. So that time, the offensive line moving bodies and opening up a comfortable gap for Charlie Belavance to waltz through. 16 plays, wow. 89 yards. It's almost hard to cram in any more plays than that. 89-yard drive on yeah. 16 plays. The kick is good. We have a two-score lead for the Cardinals now with just over two minutes to go in the first half. That, to me, is an amazing drive. Yeah. You know, keyed by a big fourth down play, keyed by a big third down pass in the flat to Gano. Yeah. And then uh, just... And it gets back for me, Tom, to that fumbled punt. That put the South uh, uh, put defense some, on the field for a long, long time. long time. And, but they were on the field an awful long time here. So now I think if yeah. you're Girton, obviously you've got to make a stop here. South can make a big statement with a score here. You know? Yeah. And, and if I'm South, look. Look at what they did last Friday night, moving it to, with Compo. Compo, 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 Compo. That's what I think. Yeah. I just think there's well, no reason. Well, you got him in fantasy? I, I just think there's no reason to get away from no, him. No, you're right. He can uh, I, Yeah, I every like I like Rousel too. <laughs> But I like Rousel in space a lot. Yeah. Josh Campo scored on fourth and eight. Scored goal twice. Goal last, last week. They got in the end zone three times. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's they, a tough catch. Oh, a what nice one-handed grab. grab. That is a nice grab because he does not make that grab. Then the ball is rolling around. Jake O'Connor time yes. on yep. the snag. Okay. Yep. Russ Francis worthy, number 81. Remember Did those you cover days? him? You, no. he was before you. No, time. he was before. I've interviewed him, but he, oh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I've interviewed him, but I've never covered him. He was before. Um, well, we had some pretty impressive tight ends on the Patriots, uh, including the one that's coming home on Sunday. 
But uh, yeah, I don't know if he's Ben be Coates able, was there. I don't know what the designation is. I don't know if he's going to be able to play on Sunday. Russ Francis popularized that tight end position in New yeah. England before everybody. Wow. Yeah, hit they, at the line of scrimmage and yeah. dragged back. Capo, no room to run. Keyed on Capo. So now what I think you're going to see is you're going to see a fake to Capo and a handoff and Rutstein keeping it. We, yeah. we saw how that worked last week. Well, as soon as he touched the ball, it was three BG defenders yeah, there. He lost to two yards. Greet him. Seemed like that might have been their whole defensive game plan we just saw there. Key on combo. Now they got to also watch out for the quarterback. Right. Rutstein is so good at running, rushing the ball and, and with the, the play fakes. And I bet that that's how they go here. He will hand it off now. to Rousel. And the ball's popped free. It is Gurton's ball. Wow. Gurton's ball. Kirkalakos gets dragged wow. out of bounds after the recovery. Ouch. And there is enough time on the clock for BG to attempt to score. Rousel had gotten out to the 34. He had gotten six yards, and then he fumbles. Wow. I was talking about how sure-handed the BG ball carriers were, and unfortunately. With 131 left. South giving it up. And now if I'm BG. A I, jarring I, hit. I'd be a little. I don't want to use up the clock. I mean, I mean, I do want to use up the clock, so I don't want to, you know, go for the pass in the flat right away, which is what they did the first time. That pass over the middle for the touchdown, they one play, and they made South pay for the mistake. But two fumbles are hurting Nashville South. It's no, it's no, no secret here. If BG gets points on the board here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, South came back from a big deficit last week, but wasn't quite three scores. Nope. And that is the threat here for Bishop Girton to go up by three. Santa Suazo rolling right. He's going to run. run it. Dodges a tackler. Still on his feet. Dragged down about at the about the 32. Yep. It is inbounds, so the clock continues to roll. It'll be second down and two after the eight-yard gain by Santa Suazo. South can only hope to keep BG out of the end zone in this final minute. 54 seconds left now in rolling. Santa Suazo immediately keeping it, following the Bellavance block off right end. And yeah, he was looking to get out of end. bounds. He didn't do it, and now the clock's going to continue to tick. But the, well, actually, the first down will stop it momentarily. Yeah, it looks like BG. The BG only should no, have one timeout left. Right. Yep. Official will wind the clock again as it ticks down from 44. 42. First and 10 at the 26. Cardinals will be forced to go to the air here pretty soon. They well, do. They do. And dodging, but not able to elude everybody. You know, yeah. caught the ball after a one yard gain you know, this but time. You know what? You got to get him in space. Yeah, not enough space not, at all. Not enough that space was the, at all on that the play. The short side of the field, yeah, too. Yeah, not but, enough space. You've got to get Gano in space. What happened there now? They call timeout. Bishop Gurton called timeout yeah, to preserve the final 26, 26 seconds. seconds. And now the clock's certainly a factor for the Cardinals as they do prefer to run it, but a couple of running plays inbounds could suck up what's remaining in the half. That's just it. You know, they're going to have to get up there and spike it. So I think South knows they're going to throw it. So South's defense that has been out there for most of this second quarter will try to come up with yeah they and they you know they have a lot of guys stop. a lot of guys play both ways yep probably going to be you know the halftime break will do them good but boy South could have really used a score before the half but you know right. what maybe they'll still get one maybe they'll you know Santa Suazo will throw it into the wrong hands you never know. We'll be back here next Friday night for North versus Bishop Girton. Well, here's the thing. That could be a that could either be a huge football game or just one of many important football games. Yeah, it depends. It's right? one or the other. Yep. Depends on what happens tonight, what happens tomorrow in Keene. So North playing at Keene this weekend. Two o'clock tomorrow. 
Merrimack right in the midst of well, five games in a row here. They're dropping back him. and swallowed up and slips the tackle. Loses it. It's pounced on by a BG lineman at the 40. Right. 21 seconds to go, and it's going to be fourth and forever okay, here pretty soon. Okay, the question is why, is, the, why is the clock stopped? Yeah, why? It's just why a is the clock play. stopped? Now it's rolling. It should have rolled the whole time. Clock should not have stopped. It was not an incomplete pass. Bonus for Bishop Girton there. They're just going to let the clock they, they, run that's down. That's it. That's the half. Yep, they They're not going to get a no, play away. No, they won't try. So and they, they stopped it. for the South defense when they needed it there at the end of the half. Yep, exactly. 21-7, to though. BG in control of this football game right now and South needing to make some halftime adjustments. But they left some points out on the field right there. They, they did. did, and I think the call to to, to Gano is the wrong. It's the wrong place to put him. You got to put somebody like that in space who's got that kind of speed. He doesn't have the ability. He's too small to break a lot of tackles. Yeah. So I think you've got to get him in space yeah. with his speed, and you know that's that would have been perfect right there. So that's just so me. But as that's Yogi me, said, you know? it's deja vu all over again, Tom, to keep their playoff. Hope's alive. South's got to go in the locker room, make down, some adjustments. Yep, they were down 13 last weekend, and now they are down 14. 14. So don't know what the story is here. Who's uh, going in where? Oh, I know what the story is. It is probably a, if you're in the, the locker room, right, it, the rules enforced that you've got to have masks on. If you're inside the locker room. So BG, well, now BG is going in. So, so maybe that's their, you know, maybe they're, they're going to dance around it. I don't know. So, I mean, South's in there too. So, yeah. which wasn't the case last week. If you remember last week, they were all, all outside. So many different protocols well, we to keep yeah, track of yeah, no kidding, these days. Know? That's Tom King. I'm John Collins. Time for the bands to shine. On this Friday night, October 1st, here at Stellos. Enjoy. We'll be back with second half action coming up. It's 21 7. BG leads south at the midway point. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2021 Bishop Girton High School Cardinal Marching Band and their field show, Latin Knights, featuring Smooth, Copacabana, and Conga. The band is under the direction of Mr. Brian Stark and is assisted by Mrs. Amanda Stark with percussion instruction by Chief Master Sergeant Dave Long, United States Air Force, and drill designed by Dr. Ron Fussell. The ensemble is conducted by drum majors Joanna Henderson and Nora Zaveri. Please welcome the Marching Cardinals.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the Marching Cardinals. Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the field is the Nashua High School South Purple Panther Marching Band and Color Guard. The Purple Panthers are under the direction of drum major Sidney Peterson, Hernia Ipe and Lauren Cooper, and Color Guard captains Clarice Rocco and Angel Frost. The assistant director is Thomas Seusser, percussion instructors Charles Davis. The Color Guard routine designers are Clarice Rocco and Angel Frost, and the band director and drill designer for the Nashua South Band is Tony Coronas. The Nashua South Purple Panthers show theme is Guardians of the Galaxy. They will be performing Hooked on a Feeling, Escape, and Spirit in the Sky. Please give a warm welcome to the Nashua High School South Marching Band and Color Guard.
ladies and gentlemen, what's here once again for the Nashua South Marching Band and Color Guard. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Welcome back, everybody, to Stello's as the two teams warm up before the start of the second half. BG is leading 21-7. to South spent more time in the locker room, Tom King. What do you think that was about? I think it was about getting set for, the next, for, this, game, for this second half and going over what they need to do and what they probably need to do offensively because they have been held to 96 yards on offense. Campo and Rossell combined – right now by my calculations only have 21 yards combined so that has to change in the second half you know for for nashville south to do anything rutstein is their leading carrier with 27 yards rushing bishop girton on the other hand charlie bellavance on the basis half of that yardage is on the 42 yard touchdown run but he's got 85 yards on the ground and 12 carries and and uh, Santa Suazo has 11 carries for 61 yards, but where Santa Suazo has made a little bit of a difference, he's 4 4, 58 yards, you know, throwing the ball with a touchdown. So BG with a 40, I believe it's a 42 yard run by Bellavance, and then a 39 yard touchdown pass from Santa Suazo to Cody Szymanski, and then Bellavance with a five yard run, and South with a compo one-yard touchdown run. All the PATs were good, and that's what you're scoring is 21-7. But um, I think Girton had to go into that locker room feeling that they left points out on the field when they had the ball at the 39-yard line with uh, you know a minute and a half left and couldn't move it, you know, and couldn't get in in the end zone. So after the turn after the uh, South turnover, South dodged a major bullet there, and let's see if they can cash in. They get the ball first to start the second half and we know that last week second half was theirs so yeah they you know, dominated in the second well, half you know they 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 answered all north scores and were able to do some things so we'll see what connor lennon's is, kicks this, a ground ball this is really john, and it's pounced on at the 29 this is really john you know we said it last week we said it last week that there were 24 minutes left in south season depending on what they did you know if they if they didn't if they didn't win that game there are only 24 minutes left same thing here same sitch they're down 13 last week they're down 14 this week yeah they've got to do the same thing so let's see if they can starting off with possession here in the second half michael rutstein and the south offense on the field balls at the 28 first and 10. you know and that's i don't know you betwixt in between do you open it up and kind of try to get Girton flat-footed with, you know, throwing the ball and, and doing some things? Or do you try to do what you did, you know, try to steady diet of Campo and see him wear them down? We're about to find out what plays South has the most confidence in and yeah. handing it off to number seven is one of those yeah, up I the middle. Don't see too much negative negativity. Flag up, but down. A yeah, good, good eye, John. There is a flag down. Also a player slow to get up for... South, South yep. one of the offensive linemen. That's uh, Matt Panthers Harding, two-way player. Panthers seem to be moving back on a holding penalty. And, of course, a hold negated a touchdown earlier in the game. Yeah, they came back from that. That right. was an impressive drive. They came, overcame two penalties in that I, I one and the, only scoring I drive. The telling drive was an 89-yard you know, 
16-play drive by Bishop By Gurton. Bishop Girton. Yeah, that's just huge. Of course, uh, Southfield was their own worst enemy with the fumbled punt in the game at a point where it was 7-7, and they were getting the ball back after an impressive defensive stop, but they fumbled in their own end of the field, and First and BG capitalized. First and 18, the ball on the 20-yard line. Handoff. Yeah, they, somebody moved Keeper. Early. Rutstein still has it around yeah. left end. That's the guy they got to really key on is Rutstein. They cannot yeah. let Rutstein beat him, and he was their leading rusher with 27 yards in the first half. So a big gain on the play, but because of that holding call, they're basically back to the original line yeah, of scrimmage. A yard off it. Second and 11 here. Might have to go to the air on this play. Uh, I, early I, I, second uh, second half. I think that they'll probably try to go Rutstein again. The yeah, keeper, are. and he's yeah. going to be dragged down near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he got he did good job to advance it about a yard and a half. So, but yeah. now this is this is a huge play yeah. here. That's what I'm because throwing that you, on second. If you stuff them. Then you're in, you know, then that, that, that's sending a little bit of a message here. But I think if you're south, you're going to probably try to throw the ball maybe to Rousel. I expect Rousel to touch the ball on this play. And you would imagine that some of the BG defenders are keying on Rousel as well. Let's it's see who. Third and nine from the 28. Rutstein's going to. Whistle blows. Somebody left early. Might be the aforementioned Rousel, who was the farthest down the field of anyone. Girton was clapping after the flag. They think it's going to be on South. South just kind of waiting for the call. And no one's moving back for Girton, so they're going to move this ball back five yards. So penalties shooting the Panthers in the foot. This has got to drive Scott Knight nuts. Third and 13. Upcoming here because of that penalty. One of the receivers appeared to leave the line early. Might have been Campo. I think they mark, yeah, they're marking that ball back to the 24. Huh? There you go. See what Girton has in the secondary on coverage. Rutstein calling the signals, the snap. I still think Two step drop. The oh a tackler my. dragged down a sack Baker? in the backfield. Could not tell who that was, but you Number think it's 64 Baker. for 64 or 84. I think it was 64, which would be uh, Justin Strandell, junior linebacker. Baker also in the area, maybe. It was 84, Tom, not I think, quite sure. I, I think it was 84. But a big sack, and it's a turnover. And now this is a tough punt to field. you got to let it go. you got to let it go. You cannot catch it if you're Girton. And I'll tell you what, John, I think Girton got away with one earlier in the game. There was a punt that bounced past Santa Suazo that I thought grazed him. Really? You thought that hit him? And the Panthers did not see it, and they took their time going down. I know which punt down. you're talking yes, about. Yes, they took their time going down and downed it. I thought it was very close. I would have to see it again. Yeah. But if I were south, I would have gone down there and pounced on it to give at least the illusion that it hit him to see what the refs do. The snap. Quick count there for Bishop Girton and driven back on the first down carry was Bellavance. I think for Bellavance up the middle isn't working. They're going to have to shoot him to the right or left off tackle there behind the guards. Matt Harding is the major reason why up the middle He's is not working. He's played a great game, hasn't he? Yep, two ways, uh, handling the shotgun snaps on offense and nose guard on defense. And he has greeted Bellavance on many of his carries up the middle. See, I see. sometimes they're too often ready to go for one and then go to the other. I'd keep feeding Bellavance the ball, let him get it ahead they of do. steam. And he's up the middle this time with more success, yeah, twisting to, and turning. And they're trying to strip it. They are. You know, and I'm sure that was talked about during halftime, too, is that, guys, they're right carrying the ball so many times. Let's go after it. But the mail is held on to by Bellavance, and he gets a first down. Holding on to the mail. Yes, moves yeah. the chains, first and 10. 
So Girton effective with the same play, basically. Bellavance up the middle. And he's close to 100 yards. He's got 98 on 14 carries right now. Matt Santa Suazo. His receivers split left and right, but he'll hand it off once again to Bellavance. And he's plowing ahead behind that line. Yeah. Trying to get four yards a carry, which would be enough to methodically move the ball downfield. That's about what they got on that. 89, I mean, 89 yards on 16 plays. They only threw the ball two or three times, I think twice on that. On yeah. That. They're at the 28 now, so. Second and or six. Actually, I'm sorry, they're at the 33. Or seven. It's Bellavance again up the middle. So if you're a receiver in this offense, you are just window dressing for the most part as Bellavance continues. Well, you may to not be hand. now. It's third down. Oh, that's and, true. Yeah. Third down and four from the from the quarterback. 31. You know? New so quarterback in the game. It might be McDonough again. Yep, that's oh, Michael McDonough. You, Mike Jake. McDonough is the quarterback. Michael McDonough. Yeah, so where so they've got Santa Suazo. They swing it out and it's, and it's yep. incomplete yeah. intended for Amaral. Yeah, see too cute that time. Yeah. You know, Almost. you got you got a little too cute. Yeah. The time to do that is on first down, not on a third and four. Or even in my second, mind. but yes. You know? And now they come up with a fourth down play that they're they've made. Two big fourth, they made a big fourth down play on that drive, drive earlier, so let's see what they do here. But also, South has shown an ability to uh, blitz and penetrate into the backfield and make Santa Suazo run for go. it. They're going to go to Bellavance. He squirts oh through the line. He's going to go for easily first down yardage another, inside the 15. Another fourth down run by Girton. Yeah, obviously they thought the pass was in the offing, Tom, and then... The Bellavans carry had the element of surprise to it. And he gets 17 wow. yards. So opportunity missed there for a fourth down stop for South. Instead, the methodical drive continues for Bishop Girton as they seek to go up by three scores. Under seven minutes to go in the third quarter. And look at the clock that's true. A bobble, yeah. but he gets out of there and He's gets out of Dodge and he scores. Oh my goodness. 15 that's, yard that jaunt. That was McDonough, right? McDonough with wow. the touchdown. Michael McDonough. Wow. He was chased from behind by Antonio Martinez, but once no. he sprinted free of the yeah, backfield, Tony Martinez, untouched. Tony Martinez is a good football player. Somebody that they be, that, that, that's been hurt and is yeah. back in, you know, now well, able to play. I mean, he handled his edge duties, but there was nobody home up the middle, yeah. Tom. Connor Lennon's kick, 28-7 wow. to 7 is the score. Oh, wow. Too easy. Is that what you're thinking? I, I, yeah. I, backup I just, quarterback goes in there. Yeah, and backup quarterback goes bobbles in there, it. bobbles it, and makes the play. But, of course, when you bobble it, the defense freezes, John. A lot of times. You, know, you see it on kick returns all the time. All the time. You're right. Exactly. Why is so, that? Because the defense freezes. Hey, you know what? You just remind me. Uh, opening game of the NFL season was uh, pay, uh, Buccaneers against the Cowboys. Yes. Did you see the very first punt of the NFL season? I didn't see a lot of It was games. a perfect Tom King coffin corner. I didn't see a lot of that game. It went out of bounds at the one on the fly. Wow. That's, that's uh, what I think I, it was the Buccaneers that's punter. What I, that's, what, that's what you want. Oh, it but was, I, it was I, hard, I, impossible I, to do I it better. I remember a Patriots uh, punter, I forget who it was, who did not have a good game and was having a bad season during the Parcells' losing year in 95. <laughs> Parcells, yeah. He was located. You walk in the old locker room at Sullivan Stadium. You walk in. He was right to the left. Coffin corner. <laughs> 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 because he was gone a couple of days. Long. I think he was gone pretty soon. Closest after to that. the door for a reason? Closest to the, no, no. But, I mean, that's where that's his locker room always was. That's oh. where special teams guys were. That's funny. So, right in the corner. Coffin. Did those guys call it that or just you? No, but another Loose fumble, fumble and Girton recovers. got it back again. Wow. Disaster for South. Early second half. 
Now the defense has got to go back out onto the field. A squib kick, fumble. And BG recovers. And that defense has got to be gassed. If I'm Wow, live I, ball. Yeah, I tell you what, if I'm uh, yeah, was that what it was a live ball and he just pounced on it or did it hit somebody? Did it hit somebody, Jason? Yeah, did no, it? but did it hit anybody? Oh, it did. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh right. boy. So there you go. Uh, Bishop Gurton set up. Third south turnover of the night. To Bishop turn this Gurton. into a route. Gurton set up. Michael McDonough back yep. out there, QB. So you wonder if there's something wrong with Santa Suazo. Yeah, you do. Hand off, Bella Vance creeps forward to the 25, gain a two. Oh boy. 10 at the yeah. 25. Several uh, South players on the replay here off screen it, uh, had the chance to recover that kick. Squirted through everybody, just like they draw it up. The, Special teams guys that design those kicks. Second and eight. McDonough. Uh, there's a flag. Yeah, there's going to be a hold. That's in the realm of holding. Yes. So that is going to come back. The hold looks like it was about the 22, so it should be back to the 32-yard line. So let's take a look at the far sideline. I looking for 18. Uh, looking for eight. 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 In this game, that's the right. Eight that's is Santa not, Suazo. Well, let's see where is Santa Suazo the far player on that on that far side? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's on the field. So as he's a on receiver. the field as a receiver. So that's what they're doing. So they've gone with that offense. Oh my! Look at that yardage. Where? 15 yard penalty. Oh, must have been behind the uh, ball carrier. Wow. Spot foul. That is a big penalty. So it's at the 37. Woo. Means the hold was at the 27. Second and 20 from the 37. McDonough talking to Bella Vance before the snap here. Straight look drop, looking to pass. Screen pass to the left. Bella Vance plows forward. Big yards there yeah, on they second got some and good long. Big yards down to the 22, which was the original line earlier. Right. So, so then we up third down and a manageable. Yeah, John five. Trusciani said they were going to start to, to get some different looks in last oh, week yeah. after he talked to them. If they wanted to get some players in, third and, and four, make McDonough is one of them. So let's see what they go with here. Third and four at the 22. Two down territory for Girton. A chance to put the game away, I think, if you score. McDonough hands it to Bellavance. Bellavance around left end, puts his shoulder down, takes down the first uh, so down marker. Had the advantage. Flag oh, comes late. It may be on south. Let's see. I think it might be a head hit out of bounds, Tom. Unnecessary roughness, perhaps. Yeah, there's a personal foul penalty. Bell events. Where are they going to mark the football for his carry? He got knocked out right at the sticks. So. And Campo was uh, acting after that call. It seemed like it might have been on him. And he probably disagrees with the call, but a frustrating night for Joshua Campo and the South team. Things have taken a much different twist here than in their comeback win over North last week. So now it's first and goal at the eight. Looking to go up by again. You got to back up four scores yeah. here. The handoff, Bellavance, nice shift to the right, shoestring tackle by Colby Vancelet. Second and goal to five. BG eating clock here, late third quarter. That's the one thing they've done with these drives. South has touched the ball for down, four, down 14 at the half. One, two, three, 
four plays. This basically to put the game away, Tom. Four scores in a quarter. And it is and right there. Bellavance is in. He's in. Touchdown. Charlie Bellavance, a four-yard carry for six points. And it is a 34-7 lead for the Cardinals with the extra point to come. Turning point. Beginning of the second half. South not able to go down and score. Could have made it a one-score game at that point. Instead, BG up by four touchdowns with this extra point yep. here from Connor Lennon to come. And he has been perfect tonight. He sure has, hasn't he? Five for five on the extra point. So, South uh, playing for pride at this point. Came into the game one and four against three and one Bishop Girton. Girton taking care of business. They've gone to the backup quarterback with uh, full success, two for two on his drives. Michael McDonald since coming into the game. 4-10 remaining third quarter. Why? I didn't expect this. No? No. no. Yeah. Girton's offensive line is winning the, winning the battle up front. There's no question about that. Connor Lennon's kick. They've pushed them around. Remember, they just recovered the last I one. I mean, when you go 89 yards, that's that tells you that you're, you're hurt up front. And you know what? I, just, I would have kicked that deep. Why give them the ball at the 40 yard line? It's almost like they don't practice yeah, kicking deep anymore. Just, you know, I mean, they. they Tanner Pulaski with the run back. You know, nice the squib, job. The short kick, the squib kick got them the ball back. I understand yeah. that. But, you know, this time, time to boot it deep. Yeah, you give up this field position yeah, consistently. I just, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I never agree with that. So, first and 10 from their 40 for the Panthers. Rothstein with Compo behind him. And now you can't afford to just hand off to Jason Campo. You're going to have to score, or Josh Campo. You're going to have to score points very quickly. Well, <laughs> the hand off to Campo. Yep. And he's dragged down after a Gert, gain of about four. Gerton could have used backfield penetration on that. But it was a nice run by Josh. It's out to the 45. You know, well, like gain South of five. Will, yeah, see, South will take that, but the problem is tick So will BG. Yeah, tick tock, tick tock. You know, I mean. Yeah. Let them take, you know. I mean, your task is to score four touchdowns to none right now, and that's, that's, that's going to be it. tough to you squeeze gotta, it into a you quarter. Gotta, you get a four-touchdown lead. If 15 minutes. Should, if something should happen, you get a five-touchdown lead, then there's running time, and you really have no time left. Abreu trying to get around left and cannot nope. as he's brought down slightly behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he lost two yards there, or at least a yard. Minus one. Third and six upcoming here for the Panthers. Third and seven. Time to put it up for to get to just be, Yeah, I have to get to just at the 50 or just a little nose beyond it. But it's four down territory. You're down by 28 well, points with uh, well, here you have the, uh, 14 and a half minutes to play. 14.46 to play. Yeah. Three receivers to the right. I, I guess you do have three cover guys, but now well, not really. one, now backs, one off. backs off. And it's oh, incomplete. And they were going for the pick. Flag. What's that? They're going to call the pick? Actually, I think he's on number four. I think they're going to call four with a hit on number two because he went and dove for the ball and he plowed into him. Referee, uh, almost like a bookmark, you, he would, threw his you, flag at the player. Yeah, would you call a penalty one more? What's what's the penalty there? We're we'll about I, I to find out. Let's see. You know? No, they they're picking it, it up. up. Yeah. Yeah, that's no that's no yeah. penalty there. That's not sure what it would have been anyway. So fourth down for South, and they are going to punt it. It looks like. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. 
It's kind of like waving the white flag at well, this point. Maybe they, they just get a player on. Yeah, late addition yeah, was Elijah Cables. Rutstein with it. He might fake it. Nope, he just does boot it away. And Burton with a fair catch, and they make it. At the 29. 2.33 to go, third quarter. Santa Suasso on the reception on the well, I would punt. Have, I would have definitely thought 49 times. Me too. Well, well, you know. I mean, you're at midfield. You're not, you know, granted, you're not at the 50, but you're at the 44, but I guess they felt it. Our defense, you know, I don't know. I mean, I would have said, let's keep our defense off the field as well, long as possible. Well, I guess there is uh, 14 minutes, 33 seconds left. But if, you if look Gerton at that scores, way. John, they, they, it's, and they get the extra points yeah. running time. I mean, you got to come up with a uh, near miraculous turnover here. Right. Pick six. I don't think that's likely, that's but McDonough oh, wow. keeps it. Fooled me. And that is, is that, Santa that's, uh, Suazo back to again. Santa Suazo. Number eight. Yep. I thought they South had penetration in the backfield with the tackle. Santa yeah. Suazo gets him eight yards. Campo coming up to make the tackle along with Rutstein from the secondary spots. Campo more of an outside linebacker. That defense has got to be so tired. Yeah. That you know, even though I, you know, I would, I would, I would just give uh, Bellavance right, Bellavance left. They hand it off. That oh! ball's loose. The foot race, and BG gets it. Oh, that's a quick wow. recovery for BG. Antonio. There's that fumble. Martinez, yeah, it was a great hit. The number Baker. three on the carry, Chimalecki, Baker. coughed see, it up. That's just a, you get away from things. Don't do that. Sit. Yeah. Bellavance, right, Bellavance, left. Get, you know. Wow, that would have been some kind of turnover if uh, South had could have got to that ball first. Uh, it would have. Uh, brought the crowd to life. Yeah. Third and seven now. Would have, the, that punt would have paid off immediately, but third, third and seven. Opportunity third knocks two. for South to come up with a defensive stop. So the hand is in the air, and the hand's not in the air yet. When it comes down, it's five. Rutstein, right. keeper right. Uh, that's a race to the corner, Santa and Suazo. he's cut down. Santa Suazo, excuse me. Yep. Cut down about Santa two Suazo. yards short, so they'll have to punt it away. So now South trailing by four scores would not go for it not gonna at go midfield. For it. They're not going to go for it, John. They're going to punt it. Okay. They just set it up. Santa Suazo is your kicker. So what he's going to do is he'll well, call the signals and then he'll back up. Yeah. But just, they're also letting as much time tick down as they can to get close to the end of the quarter. Right. So see, see, and there he goes. See, he's, he's going to back up. So he backs be, up, and also by that. This and one's it's a good kick. Rutstein catches yeah. it, circling to his left. Slips a couple tackles, goes out of bounds at about the 37. First and ten. So it's still technically the third quarter. South getting the ball back with eight seconds remaining. Needing four touchdowns to come all the way back. <laughs> well, you're going to have to score two and then hope for two turnovers and score two more. There you go. You know, or score quickly. And I don't know if South has that. This is not the South team that you know in terms of their, their modus operandi where they spread it out and you know, all that and they score quickly. Not that kind of te team, you know. You would think they'd have to get Rousell into the mix in the passing yeah. game. Maybe Lemire, Karsten Lemire is the far right you know, they, they receiver. Need, they need to score fast, and it's, it, it might be tough for them to do it yep. here. Last play coming up of this third quarter. Handoff. Compo puts his head down and gets right. met they really in the backfield. Him. They've really keyed on him. Baker in on the tackle. Who else? And that'll do it for the third quarter. Sixty-eight for Girton with a great hit there alongside Baker, Rocco, Jirasi. So those handoffs tonight for Campo have just not produced the same results against Girton as they did against 
north. And as we enter the fourth quarter, the emphasis of the South offense will no doubt shift to more of a passing game. See how they handle it on second and long. What's the latest on the uh, Londonderry score, Pete? Londonderry. Oh, Winnicott kind of at Dover. Yeah, Londonderry's tomorrow, right? Londonderry's tomorrow versus Against Alvern. Alvern. Yeah, Alvern returns after a COVID break. Still 19 nothing. Alvern had about 33 players at practice mm. on Tuesday when I was uh -huh. on that way to cover a soccer game. So the start of the fourth quarter. Second and nine for South. Well, Rothstein hands it off. Rousel. Rousel slips the tackler and he is still on his feet, spinning forward to the 50. He's got a first down. And Needed nine, got about 12. That's the kind of run that they need to get him untracked. You ask me, he's kind of because yards. of the turnovers and having to play defense and what he does, he's kind of been underutilized a little bit in this game offensively. Yep. Up to the line of scrimmage. Fourth quarter just underway. South trailing 35 to 7. At midfield. Compo changes direction, gets a yard before he's wrestled down. Baker yeah, in on the tackle. Josh ran a long way to get one yard as he had to change a yard and a half maybe. But again, if you're Girton, you'll take those running plays because it just keeps the clock ticking. Yep. Clock is their friend at four scores up. He's going to Rutstein run looking for an no, opening that, that isn't time. there. there isn't one. Greeted rudely by Rocco Girassi. Yeah, Girassi is just, uh, he had a great game yep. on the offensive side of the ball last week blocking, and he's having a great game tonight on the defensive side of the ball. TFL, tackle for loss. It'll be third down and 10, back to the 50. Trying to get to the 40. This has got to be two down territory. It's got to be. Rutstein in the shotgun. Matt Harding handling the snaps tonight. Perfect again. It's Flushed out of the him. pocket. Throws to the right. He's got two receivers over there. Lemire's got it, but he's only got a one-yard yeah. gain. Well, see, the problem is you just said it, John Collins. Two receivers in the same area. That brings two defenders to that area, and it just doesn't work. No possible yards after the catch as it was just traffic. Lemire had pressure immediately, had a run to his right, and uh, but no chance to throw it down to the first down marker area. Oh, are they going to punt? Looks like they are. Looks like they are. Well, the quarterback is the punter, so you never know. So. Yep. I does drive. boot it. And uh, caught on the fly. Santa Suasso, are they going to whistle that dead? It was sort of like in between a fair catch and a not a fair well, catch. I, I, I didn't see him raise his <coughs> arm, but. There's a flag. Yep. Maybe the official saw a fair catch indication, and they're going to penalize Santa Suasso for taking off. He says he windmilled his right arm a little bit as he pleads his case. Oh, and so maybe Santa Suasso thought that the official did not see his well, fair catch indication. So what's the penalty? <laughs> what's the penalty? They're penalizing Santa Suasso for, uh, for, for running indicating the ball, fair catch and then running and then with running it. Running the ball. Yeah, but the, the, the flip side of that is we didn't hear the whistle. So he right, so he played he, to the whistle. It played to the whistle. 
and yet they did penalize. That's just bad officiating. Yeah, it really uh, I, is. I yeah. mean, come on. Yeah. You know, just really bad officiating. Right. If you're going to stand there and look at him and not blow the whistle, what do you expect ref. him to do? He looked at the ref. He did. You know, we yep. saw him look at the ref. The ref just stood there, you know. So you play to the whistle. Right. Since Pop Warner, right? The handoff. Galloping through the line. Looks like Bella Vance. He's swallowed up in purple, but not before a huge gainer on first down. Josh Campo and... Others in on the tackle for South. 9-10 left, clock rolling. BG, more interested in taking time off the clock, I think, than oh, scoring again. I, I think obviously. Yeah. Up the middle, Bella Vance holding firmly onto that ball. First down, needed one, got about seven. Under nine minutes to go now. Just a, a, a strange type of game, but a physical yeah. game where hit at the line not, of scrimmage. Not too many times over the years. You know, since in this decade, could you say Bishop Gurton is winning the physical battle, but they've won the physical battle tonight. They won it last week. Yeah. And, and that, a lot of that Lowe's linemen are back next year, too. Oh, wow. Yeah. Bonus. Big boys up front winning the battle consistently tonight for Gurton, although South's defensive line who's got to be exhausted, have had their moments of sh shining defensive play. Not this time, the big hole up the middle, and Santa Suazo. first down for Santa Suazo. About to the 47. I mean, you know, they've changed things up a little bit, Girton did, with a few off different offensive looks and a few different offensive plays, especially with McDonough in there. You'll see more of that, but really, you know there's there's two guys that are going to carry the ball for the most part. And they're just not able to stop it. You saw that last week with Merrimack, and we're seeing it today with BG. And now, basically, John, what yes. this sets up is if North can take care of their end of the, 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 the business tomorrow and win at Keene, it basically sets up next Friday night here on National ETV for most likely the West Conference title. Wow. In week six. The game. It Tackle would be a, uh, the it line would, of scrimmage. Yeah, it would be a huge, a huge game in my mind. Is that Bella Vance again? Yes. Some substitutions now for South, getting some new players into the game. Jim Brown checks into the game for the Panthers. Talk. Are we lucky? <laughs> That's it. See a Hall of Famer play. <laughs> Seven, six fifty-nine. We're under six fifty-nine left. Actually, he goes by Jimmy Brown, but number uh, seventy-six in there. Ca that doesn't count. That. And if it, was, <laughs> if it was James Brown. We expected him to give oh, us a concert. That's right. Handoff. That's Brown, and, isn't it? No, uh, no that's four. number four for BG. The Browns on the uh, Panthers as a, as a defensive lineman, Marcel Vernon. Junior running back. Yep. Got uh, two or three on that. So it's third down and long and for the, one, the Cardinals. He's the one who fumbled earlier. Oh, yeah. But oh, they I, are, believe, they I are, believe that was number, that was Chmielecki, the uh, oh, number was three it? that fumbled. Oh, yeah. okay, it was three, it wasn't five. But he wasn't a turnover, though, right? No, it wasn't. Yeah, they've actually fumbled the ball a few times, BG, but they've managed to cover. So, Santa Suazo calling signals. Going to follow Bellavance's block. He is going to be on his feet past the first that. down marker. And 
Moves the chains. That just should not yeah, happen. Yeah, you're right. They had a shot at him they, they short him, of and the marker. And he just moving and moving and moving. That's what I mean when I say phys it's physical. And I uh, Under six minutes to go and rolling. I have the dubious dis dubious task of having to talk to Scott Knight after this game. I don't think he's going to be a very happy guy with the way his team play. Penalties and turnovers are one thing, but getting beaten physically off the ball is another. Yeah, I mean, it looks really bad on the scoreboard, and one of those games where you can truly say this is not is a one lot of those closer. games where you know a multiple number of errors causes a score. They've got two turnovers that BG scored off. Yeah, of, but, but still, this is what they're doing. This is what you see right here. Is that yeah. positive yardage again? The drive, 89 yards in 16 plays, tells the story. Yeah, it does. A uh, drive that gassed the South defense for the rest it, uh, of the game. I think so, John. I really do. You know? And Girton doing what good teams do. Take the, the, the clock down. Bellavance right up the middle. Oh boy, nothing there. A couple of hard hits. It's almost time to start thinking about taking... Bellavance and yeah, to Suazo you would off, think, right? off the field. I think so. 4.30 left. Uh, this game pretty much you know, decided 30, yeah, a while ago. Yeah, it's a it's a 28-point lead with four and a half minutes left. South's not going to come back from this the way they play offense. They don't throw the ball as, as much. C.J. Junard, number 77. Yeah, I figured that was him. but Special timeout. We'll played an excellent game They're going to measure here? Is that what they want to do? See Janot, he's got to be at least 220. Um, 6'5", 222. One of those big guys up front, Tom. Deep goes, goes both ways. Number 77, C.J. Janot. Um, didn't say his name enough tonight. He's playing right tackle right now. And he is a formidable lineman uh, on both sides of the ball. Yikes. One of the reasons why they have a, uh, aspirations to go deep in the postseason. There is Santos Suazo following some blocks, has way more than the yard he needed for the first down, and it's got it inside the 20 with 340 left. Yeah, now it's, I guess they're going to let him stay out here for this last drive. Yeah. But looks like uh, South then, may not see the ball again. Yeah, I mean. At this rate, clock stops for the chains. Nathan Smith out there now for South One, number 11. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. South has had the ball excluding punts for 11 plays. Ooh. In the second half. 11 in plays. In the second half, out of 24 minutes. 11 plays for South in the second half. 11 plays. 11 plays. Wow. Not good. Not touching the ball enough. Clock continues to tick. Girton taking the I'm time. I'm thinking Girton's had 11 plays at least on this drive, right? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this will be number 11. It's a run off right tackle by Marcel Vernon. What number, John? Four? Number 4. Yep. He gets uh, 7 yards on that. Well, he got more than that. Oh, no, you're right. Yep, seven down to the 13-yard uh, line. Yep. Under three minutes to go now in ticking. And Girton, again, just taking their time, taking time off the clock. Boy. Wow. Yeah. Cannot remember a South Girton game like this. Vernon again. Nice cut. Yeah. Nice run. Get some extra yards. Down to the nine. Of course, I don't know if South's got their other unit in there so so but first and goal from the sub. five yep 220 to go bg at this point probably doesn't want to score on first down they'd like to take the clock well, right they, down under know, a minute 40 second play clock so they can take that time down as much as they want 
They don't have to score. But South's got three timeouts left. So watching a college game where the strategy was to let the other team score and saw the guy do a baseball slide on the one, the running back that had the whole end zone open to him. Well, sometimes you see running backs try to, to not score. Yeah. And they, their momentum carries. And then they through. go in. Happened yeah. In the see that at the pro level, right? Yep. Uh, and a tackle for loss in the backfield. Nicely done by South defender Osabuyan Asuki. One thirty-five to go. I John, assume that was a John, good you're right. I don't think Nashua South is going to see the ball again. That, and, to uh, me, is amazing. I'm not sure like how a much. like a nine-minute drive here? I, yeah, I'm not sure how much time was on the clock when they started. I should have marked that down, and I didn't. I feel like it was in the eights. Eight it had something. to be. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, they're just taking the time down. It's second and goal for the five. Yep. Vernon is going to be tackled short tackled of the goal the line. And that's going to do it. John Collins, I'm going to head down on All the right. field. See you we next Friday. See you next Friday for what could be a very, very, very battle very, for the very, division. Could be a big game. Yeah. Let's see what happens tomorrow with North playing at Keene. BG certainly taking care of business here. Up 35 to 7 with a half a minute to go and the clock ticking down. They do have a choice to take a knee or try to run it in. I would imagine they're just going to be content to uh, make this the last play of the game. But they do have to run it. Uh, so. What happened there? They uh, did they take a timeout? They took a timeout to avoid a delay a game penalty when it could just uh, ended things with a taking a knee. Uh, oh well. Gives Tom more time to get down to the field. Is right. He appreciates it. That's a. Tom King courtesy timeout, I guess. Bill Thorpe uh, passing out the peanut butter cookies. I can't have peanuts. But Bill Thorpe makes a mean cookie. And he makes the apple cinnamon, chocolate chip, oatmeal. 14 seconds to go, and let's see how BG just wants to play this as a, uh, a kneel down, probably. Not to rub it in. They will end the game. So it is a 35 to 7 victory for the Cardinals as they go to four wins and just one loss on the season. South falls to 1 and 4. For my partner Tom King and cameraman Tim O'Neill and my executive producer Pete Johnson, I'm John Collins thanking you for watching and thank you all for joining us again next Friday when we will be able to show you Nashua North versus BG which could be the battle for the eventual winner of the division. Good night from Stellos Stadium everybody. Thank you all for coming. Drive safe and we'll see you next week. Thank you.